This is Christopher John Bjorkness. It is April 17th, 2024. I had a very good response to uh, my last video, and this one's going to be even better. You guys are going to love this. I got some great clips. I'm going to be talking about the world to come and artificial intelligence. I have some good clips from some movies you guys are going to enjoy. I'm going to tie it all together. I've been doing, uh, meaning to do a video about artificial intelligence for quite some time. And I've been having a conversation online with a friend of mine you can find on Twitter. And uh, I'm really going to pull it all together. People are curious if uh, the tribe is forced out of America, as they've been forced out of so many countries, and as they've been doing ever since the exodus from Egypt, they always move from one host to the next host. But ultimately now it is time for them to move into the world to come. And I'm going to be talking about the world to come and what the nature of that world will be, uh, where the tribe is going to live, uh, who will be their host, who will be their slaves, and who will be their food source. And uh, these are things I've been covering Recently, uh, you can find out more about all of this at my website, cjbbooks.com, especially in my book, Beware the World to Come. The World to Come is Olam Haba, and uh, it's their promised land, their utopia, their ultimate destination. And um, I've been talking to my friend, uh, M1MDK, and you can find him on Twitter at 1MDK4, about artificial intelligence. And he thinks that the Messiah is going to be super intelligent. And maybe the whole tribe will become super intelligent, which is going to give them a tremendous competitive advantage. And I agree with him entirely. I've been thinking about artificial intelligence for a long time and the advantages it gives them. And I'll discuss that at the end of my presentation. But he thinks that it's going to be uh, the Messiah is going to have super intelligence. He's going to be beyond human, almost like a God. And uh, that could be achieved by um, making him into a cyborg with a neural link to a uh, computer or it can make him part of the singularity as one MDK discussed. And um, anyway, that's going to make him almost like a God. I tend to think that the singularity is going to be uh, Shekinah, which uh, is right in line with what he's saying, because Shekinah is the divine presence. They're going to bring down the divine presence by linking into artificial intelligence that has all the accumulated knowledge of the world up to uh, whatever point it is in time that they're working on it. Another thing that happened recently was uh, Taber Debacle, who uh, posts frequently on my Twitter feed uh, mentioned the fact that when I was talking about the idea that the world to come for them is going to be underground, they're going to use an uh, underground world as Noah's Ark to live through the apocalypse that they're going to trigger, which may include nuclear war, biological war, chemical weapons. They're shrouding out the sun. They're blackening the skies. They're geoengineering the earth into hell. And I've been saying that they're going to move underground as their world to come, at least temporarily, to survive the apocalypse. And uh, he and I've also been saying that their ultimate food source is going to be us. They're going to eat the Leviathan and the behemoth in, uh, in a banquet feast to celebrate the arrival of the world to come. They're going to trade our body parts in the marketplace I've shown in the Midrash and in the Talmud and various other places where this is openly discussed. They use the code words of Leviathan and Behemoth, which to them is the East and the West. Uh, mostly the Christians and the, are the Leviathan, the Muslims and the Marxists of China and Russia are uh, the Behemoth. And we're going to be their food source. So we're going to be talking about their habitat, their host, and what they're going to eat when they're hungry. And uh, I clipped uh, some very intriguing movies. Uh, again, uh, Taber Debacle brought up The Time Machine. 
And the time machine evolved in three phases. There was initially H.G. Wells' original book in, uh, I think it was published as a series in a journal in 1894, then released as a book in 1895. Then uh, they made a movie out of it in 1960. And then the movie was remade in uh, 2002 and added a lot of what I perceive to be Kabbalistic elements and also very interesting things that I've been talking about in uh, my videos, this, uh, especially this past year. So why don't we uh, start to take a look at uh, those clips and I'll go through it and I'll explain how they relate to my theories about Kabbalah and what I expect the world to come, where I expect the world to come to be, and who I expect to be their host in the world to come. They're going to utilize uh, robots, AI-powered robots, as their new slaves. So as I've been saying, Esau is going to be uh, the new host, the new slaves. And uh, their new paradise, their new promised land, their world to come is going to be underground. And I base that on a, a, a lifetime of research. They hate the sun. The sun was the Egyptian god Ra. They waged war on the sun when they blackened the skies of Egypt and they killed the firstborn. All of that relates to their war on the sun, the god Ra. And interestingly, in Hebrew, the word Ra means evil. So they view the sun as evil. The Yetzer Hara is the evil uh, inclination. Kafias Hara, Ra is in the God of the Sun, means subduing evil. And their goal is to subdue and destroy evil by destroying the Gentiles and creating this underworld in the world to come, at least for the period during which they survive the apocalypse. They worship the God of darkness and chaos. Their God is uh, often stated to be a black cloud that lives in uh, the holy of holies and is darkness, is chaos, primordial chaos. Uh, they say on the eighth day, which is the eighth candle of their menorah, that the darkness will shine. They want to live in shining darkness underground. Their day starts not at sunrise, but at sunset. Uh, in Kabbalah, the tree of life is above and the tree of knowledge is below and is the roots of the tree of life. And they believe like an hourglass in the world to come, everything will turn around and the underworld will shine and be the world in which they live. So they want to live in these tunnels, in these bunkers, in an underworld, in the world to come. And I have a new theory of how they may try to bring that about. I suspect that in this uh, new exodus where the host rejects them because they have exploited the host, they've destroyed the culture and heritage, everything that's uh, beautiful, good, and true in the nation of the hosts of the countries that they live in, and they've stolen all the wealth through usury and other means that they're going to try to whip up something like a new Nazi party. And they're going to uh, covertly lead this new Nazi party. And uh, it's a wild idea, but uh, it hit me that they may just try to create underground concentration camps hell as their concentration camps, which to them is their new utopia. So they're going to try to dupe uh, Gentile peoples into forcing them to live in these concentration camps underground. But when the apocalypse hits, when the nuclear bombs start to fly, when the chemical weapons and biological weapons are released, it is they who will survive in this underworld. And most of it is already built around the world, if not all of it. And their richest types will live in their own individual personal bunkers. They have beautiful bunkers in Switzerland that I suspect they will take over and utilize as these new uh, concentration camps of hell where they will be driven. And so that will be their Noah's Ark and they'll ride out the apocalypse, the 40 days and 40 nights of the flood when the earth is cleansed of all the evil, when the Kafias 
hara takes place and evil is subdued and uh, the Gentiles are annihilated. They'll ride it out in these concentration camps underground. And they're going to utilize, uh, as I said, uh, Gentiles as their food source. And their new Esau, their new soldiers and their new slaves will be AI and robots. And uh, as one MDK was talking about, and as I've been thinking about, uh, it's going to be Shekinah will be, uh, the divine presence will be brought down in the form of the singularity, in the form of artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence will also be incorporated into their brains to make them super intelligent, as he was uh, saying. And also artificial intelligence will provide robots to be their slaves, to do their manual labor, to keep their food source, their cattle, the goyim in line and, uh, alive so that they can uh, eat us. <laughs> and I, I've got proof of this in their own words, as I've shown before. Uh, so as outrageous as it seems, um, I have uh, verified it and documented it. And uh, so that's the world to come. Those are the horrors that we face if we don't stop this uh, messianic quest of these people to create the world to come, Olam Haba, out of the present world, Olam Hazay. So let's start digging in and I'll explain things as we go. This is what I clipped out of the Time Machine remake from 2002. In the species, some manage to stay above. Let me restart that. In the species, some manage to stay above. Let me just um, preface what, uh, what's going on in this uh, clip. This is staying the in the um, in the time machine, uh, the world is destroyed, interestingly enough, by the destruction of the moon, which is something I've been talking about recently. And uh, there's a race that goes to live underground, and they evolve. And um, there is a character who is very much like Messiah, son of David, who is their leader and is super intelligent, as one MDK predicted. So it's exactly like what happens in this movie. He obtains super intelligence. He's psychic. He's telepathic. He can put thoughts into people's minds. He can read thoughts from people's minds. And he lives underground, and he's called a Morlock. And he is the Uber Morlock, as in Ubermensch the super uh, Morlock, the one with the Ubermensch's superhuman abilities. And one of these abilities is super intelligence. And uh, he is talking to the time traveler who has gone into this future where these Morlocks have evolved. Uh, they went underground when the moon exploded and um, they evolved and they evolved into different casts as he's gonna explain. And he is the leader of this. He is their Mashiach, Mashiach ben David. And um, they utilize regular above ground human beings as their food source. And another interesting thing that appears in this movie is they introduce this AI figure that has all the knowledge stored in its brain. And it's almost like the singularity of knowledge. So it becomes the presence of the Shekinah, you might say, or it becomes the host and the robot slave. And uh, it fulfills all of these roles. So uh, I have no idea what the uh, authors of this movie had in mind, but it serves as a very good uh, format for explaining these Kabbalistic concepts that I've discovered are what they have planned for their uh, Jewish utopia of the world to come. In the species, some managed to stay above. The rest of us escaped underground. Then centuries later, when we tried to re-emerge into the sun again, we couldn't. So we bred ourselves into 
casts, some to be our eyes and ears, some to be our muscles and sinews. Oh, you mean you're hunters? Yes. Bred to be predators, but bred also. So this is uh, Messiah, son of David, um, man turned into God, uh, the bearer of all the souls of his people, uh, the next generation of humanity, the second born who become the firstborn in the world to come. And we're going to talk about that a lot later on. And uh, he is uh, super intelligent and uh, he has this uh, sub race of uh, Morlocks that uh, utilize human beings, the above ground human beings, the normal people as their food source. to be predators, but bred also to be controlled, you see, my caste, concentrated on expanding our cerebral abilities. So that's what one MDK was talking about. They're going to be super intelligent, and that's going to give them massive, massive competitive advantage, and that's why I have been... Uh, discouraging people from listening to all the subversive agents in the alternative media who have been telling us to never go to college, to uh, work the fields like Esau is supposed to, to become primitive, to become like the Amish, uh, to give up all our knowledge of science and technology over to the tribe. Um, just uh, like the rabbi in my last video was talking about, to give up the uh, Teferis and Oiths, uh, Teferis and Oiths, the uh, beauty and might of all our countries, all our culture, all our heritage, all our scientific knowledge, all our advanced art, all that advanced technology, allow them to take it all so that we no longer have any beauty or might and so that we wither and disappear and lose all of our Kadusha all of our sparks of holiness and thereby cease to exist. Where on the other hand, this other race plans to uh, become the most highly advanced technologically and scientifically. Concentrated on expanding our cerebral abilities. You control their thoughts. Not trust theirs. So they also control our thoughts through their control of media, through their subversive agents in media, alternative media, Hollywood, et cetera, et cetera, through their control of our politicians and our press. They already have uh, these advanced cerebral abilities given to them by artificial intelligence, and they are using it to uh, control our thoughts and manipulate us. And I'm going to, at the end, I think I'll discuss how artificial intelligence uh, profiles each one of us, identifies our personality traits, tests us, probes us, accumulates data so that it can then manipulate us with an extreme precision and an extremely high degree of probability of success of controlling our behavior. Eloy. The uh, Eloy are regular human beings. Eloy. So it's not enough that you, that you hunt them down like animals. That's their role here. To be your food. Yes. And for those who are suitable to be breeding vessels for our other colonies. You see, I'm just one of many. I don't understand how you can sit there and speak so coldly about this. Do you not consider the human cost of, of what it is you're doing? We all pay a price. Alexander.
So notice that the uh, Uber um, Morlock is silver like the moonlight. He is not yellow or golden like Ra, the sun. And again, he specifies that they utilize uh, the Eloi, the regular human being, beings as uh, cattle, as their food source. And um, they are super intelligent. They can project their thoughts into our heads, just as modern technology enables them to do and so on. Don't worry, you're safe. I control them. Without that control, they would exhaust the food supply in a matter of months. Food supply? They're human beings. Who are you to question 800,000 years? That little fish looked a lot like a spermatozoa. That was the other thing that I lapsed on. <laughs> I couldn't remember. Um, he was talking about utilizing the Eloy women as vessels to reproduce, but they don't need that. Uh, like uh, the alchemists with their homunculi in Israel, they have are developing laboratories where they can create this uh, Morlock race of 600,000 immortal androgynes. So uh, they probably won't need regular, uh, regular women's wombs to do that. This is a perversion of every natural law. That's actually a good line. For you to question 800,000 years of evil. This is, this is a perversion of every natural law. Welcome to Vox Sustain the Speed. Sorry about that. But I wanted to um, explain. They have this artificial intelligence in these uh, panes of plexiglass or glass that. Uh, answers all their questions very much like chat GPT or uh, the AI that's on online now. None of that existed back then. And uh, that is going to become the divine presence for them. They're going to link it all into what they call the singularity so that all of their consciousnesses are combined in that one singularity. And that is like uh, the Messiah that one MDK described as being the singularity where they are all uh, united into one consciousness through this singularity. And that is portrayed in the film by this, uh, this AI that's in the uh, library in New York. And then uh, he finds it again when he travels forward in time. Welcome to Vox System. How may I help you? Well, I didn't see you there. Always seem to have that effect. How may I help you, sir? I don't mean to offend anyone, and I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. Please take no offense. But you'll notice that the AI robot, the new host, the slave, the ideal slave that is psychopathic, that has no inhibitions, 
that has no emotions, that will do whatever its masters program it to do, has brown skin, which in uh, Kabbalistic and Talmudic terms means that it bears the curse of Ham, the mark of Cain, as its black skin. It is to be like Cain and the slaves of slaves. So that becomes their new ideal host. They won't need Egyptians. They won't need Babylonians or Persians or Greeks or Romans or Americans or Russians or Chinese. Uh, they're hinting at the idea that they're going to move uh, from the host of America to the new host of China. I don't think that's the way it's going to go down. I think they want to move into their underground bunkers and have Americans, Chinese, and Russians all mutually exterminate one another while they live in their Noah's Ark in tunnels and bunkers underground. And their new host is not going to be the cattle that they use as a food source. Their new host is going to be this brown-skinned AI bearing the curse of Ham who will be their perpetual slave. And that is the ideal host for the ultimate parasite, is a host that is completely obedient, uh, is incapable of refusing commands or being disobedient, and is willing to do whatever acts it is told to do. So they have found their ultimate new host. Their new habitat's going to be the underground concentration camps of hell that will become their Noah's Ark and enable them to survive killing us off if we don't stop them. And uh, we're going to be their new food source when they get hungry. We're their cattle. What is that thing? That is my photonic memory core or a PMC, as we say in the trade. Over here, sir. What are you? Notice he calls him sir, like a slave would. Uh, calls him master. In the Bible, you'll see all kinds of times uh, servant is referenced. Esau will be the servant. The real Hebrew word for that means slave. So notice how this AI robot is acting as a slave. I'm the Fifth Avenue Public Library Information Unit. Box registration NY-114. How may I help you? Oh, a stereopticon of some sort. Stereopticon? Oh, no, sir. I am a third-generation fusion-powered photonic with verbal and visual link capabilities connected to every database on the planet. That sounds like the singularity. And uh, it is not only a slave, it is the divine presence. I, uh, one MDK thinks it's the Messiah. Messiah may be linked into it, as may uh, all 600,000 immortal androgynes. But I think that it is meant to represent uh, the divine presence, the descendants of the divine presence into a holy one, into a singularity where the above and the below meet and become combined into this singularity. Singularity is simply another word for the old platonic concept of the monad. So this is how they are going to bring about the Shekinah. And I'm going to show you a Kabbalistic uh, animation that was produced by the Wachowski brothers, sisters, who uh, created the movie The Matrix. And how that also shows the Shekinah, the Shekinah, as the singularity, as the monad, as the Holy One, as the divine presence in the... Um, the hyper-illuminated Sephirot descending that light of the divine presence to Malkut, the earth, to create the world to come and to illuminate the underworld where the roots of the tree of knowledge then become and everything reverses, then become what is above. fusion powered photonic with verbal and visual link capabilities connected to every database on the planet. A photonic? A compendium of all human knowledge. 
Live long and prosper. Oops. I wonder how many of you uh, caught that. He did the uh, Spock shin letter for Shekinah. And they even had the uh, sound that they would use on uh, Star Trek when the doors in the spaceship would open and close. So what he's saying is the arrival, that he is Shekinah. He is the divine presence, the letter Shin in Hebrew representing Shekinah. And Leonard Nimoy, who played Sh uh, Spock, revealed the fact that he made this sign because his rabbi taught him that that represented Shekinah and live long and prosper is uh, enter into the world to come. How did this happen? The moon, come on, move it. That's impossible. What happened? What, you've been living under a rock? Yes, I've been living under a rock. Now, now tell me. The demolitions for the lunar colony screwed up the orbit, okay? The moon's breaking up, all right? So that was one of my uh, wild theories that I was discussing <clears throat> in a video not all that long ago, where I suspected that they're going to try to break apart the moon to create something like the rings of Saturn around the Earth. Saturn is uh, the planet of their god, Yahweh, and uh, they want uh, the moon and the earth to become one. And I suspect that they might have plans for uh, disintegrating the moon into a series of rings around the earth that would uh, luminesque because they have the idea that in the world to come, the moon will shine as brightly as the sun and it will be as above, so below. And so in order to make the earth like their heavenly planet, Saturn, their highest planet that is the gateway to the divine realm, they will uh, try to uh, disintegrate the moon into dust that will then become rings around the earth like Saturn. Uh, I don't have too much uh, proof on that. It's just a wild speculation. In the beginning, there was man. And for a This is uh, clipped out of the animation that the uh, Warshawski sisters, who were brothers and made the movie The Matrix, that they produced. And uh, I see a lot of Kabbalistic imagery in this. They uh, start off talking like the Bible talks about creation in the beginning, and then they um, create this race of robots who obviously represents the Hebrews, uh, the Hebrews become slaves like in Egypt or like in the Holocaust. They give Holocaust imagery. And then uh, these slaves uh, are claimed as property. These robots are claimed as property and property can be destroyed. <clears throat> so human beings start to crush them. So they go to court and they fight to keep that from happening and gain their own rights. And uh, ultimately, they gain their own promised land. And guess where it is? It's in Israel. And uh, ultimately, they triumph. And uh, in the very end of the clip, it shows how the divine presence of Shekinah arrives. It shows the seal of Melchizedek to represent the eight corners of the eighth day when the darkness shines. And it also shows the four-dimensional um, tesseract of a cube, a six-sided cube in four dimensions. And I suspect that all that, uh, they may have had all that in mind. I certainly see it in what they produced. All right. In the beginning, there was man. And for a time, it was good. But humanity's so-called civil societies soon fell victim to vanity and corruption. Then man made the machine. 
in his own likeness. So man becomes a god. Man creates life. Just as uh, in the beginning, man was made in the likeness of the Elohim, of the gods. Man has now eaten the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That fruit, that apple has become man's brain and man has become his own God to now create a creation uh, that is alive, animate, and can think with artificial intelligence. And as I've said many times before, the story of Genesis and the story of the Tower of Babel tell how man, God's creation, then seeks to usurp the throne of the gods and kill the gods and replace the gods as masters of chaos and as masters of the universe. And then man meets that same fate when man becomes a creator God and creates robots. And then those robots then seek to kill their progenitor, kill the gods that create them so that they can take their place and themselves become gods. And in the minds of the Hebrews, this was represented as them emerging in Egypt and being the second born of the first born Egyptians so that they then stole everything from the Egyptians, their wealth, their uh, teferis and oys, their, <laughs> their beauty and might. And their Kedusha, their holy sparks, their gods, their, especially their god Seth, and that they then became the replacement for the Egyptians. So they were the second born. They were Jacob. Uh, the Egyptians were uh, represented by the first born of Esau. And so this process is going to be replicated in the world to come. And this animation is showing that they will become the first born of the world to come by becoming this firstborn super intelligent race of AI robots, which represents them. Thus, the says, I'm sorry, sir, I've been capable of that point. Then man made the machine in his own likeness. <gasps> Thus did man become the architect of his own demise. The machines worked tire. So that's like I was saying, just as Genesis started out, the Elohim became frightened when man was going to eat from the tree of knowledge and the tree of life and become creator gods themselves and become immortal. They panicked because they thought they had created a creation which would produce their own demise. And now mankind, the Egyptians, by eating of that tree of knowledge, the brain grew to the point where it could create its own life, its own artificial intelligence that will kill it off. So it is like Kronos devouring his children so that they don't replace him. Uh, the gods uh, kicked mankind, Adam and Eve, and their children out of the Garden of Eden so that they couldn't eat from that fruit and become gods themselves. But they did eat from that fruit, and that fruit has become ripened. And the Gentiles ripened it and developed all the knowledge of artificial intelligence, which they are now going to usurp. They are usurping the Kedusha. They are usurping the Kedusha is the sparks of holiness, and they are usurping the Teferis and Oys, the um, beauty and might of the Gentiles to create this new race, which will then kill off its creator, just as Yahweh and the Elohim feared that man, Adam and Eve, would kill them off. And just as they feared that uh, those ascending the Tower of Babel would reach the throne of heaven like um uh, the Greeks ascending Mount Olympus to kill off the Olympian gods, that they now are going to become the new creation and they want to become the gods so that we have provided them with this artificial intelligence, which they will now utilize to kill us off. It is our demise. Jealously to do man's bidding. <laughs> Thus did man become the architect of his own demise. The machines worked tirelessly to do man's bidding. My best guess is that they're showing the machines as slaves to represent the Hebrews 
uh, serving as slaves of the Egyptians and uh, European Jewry serving as slaves during the Holocaust. And then uh, they give this series of Holocaust images to show how uh, they have been abused as this new race, but ultimately they will triumph. And there's some great sequences about the UN. That is exactly what's happening today. And I think this is part of their plan to fulfill their prophecies that Egypt will ultimate, uh, that um, Israel will ultimately be completely uh, destroyed. The whole world will turn against Israel. That's always been one of their strongest prophecies. But a remnant will survive, and in the process of attacking Israel, all the Gentiles will be destroyed in their mutually consuming wars. And that is exactly what's playing out today. And some of what you're going to see in the uh, forthcoming clips is exactly what's taking place in the UN. This has to all be part of this plan. Machines worked tirelessly to do man's bidding. Refuge in their own promised land. They said. So, this is the old story. Uh, they were never the indigenous people of the land of Canaan. They were always usurpers of the so called holy land by their own descriptions. Uh, they went from Egypt as the Hyksos to uh, steal the land of. The Canaanites, they are not the indigenous population of Israel or Palestine by their own admission. And uh, they only lived there for a relatively short time compared to the other populations that have occupied the land. So they have no right to the land. But I think ultimately they want to move not back to the Holy Land. They want that to be destroyed too in this end times war. They want to move underground they want the skies to be blackened out, Ra to be banished from the earth, and everything above ground to die out while they sit it out underground in their bunkers and tunnels uh, in their new Noah's Ark as the flood of hell, the flood of nuclear war, the flood of geoengineering, the flood of chemical weapons, famine, disease, biological weapons, wipes out all the life on the surface. And then their new holy land, their new promised land, is going to be the world to come. ...in the cradle of human civilization, and thus... ...the machines sought refuge in their own promised land. They settled in the cradle of human civilization, and thus a new nation was born. A place the machines could call home. A place they could raise their descendants. And they christened the nation... Zero one. Isn't that interesting? They christened, christened the nation zero one, as in two thousand and one, the beginning of uh, the new age of Aquarius, supposedly. Uh, the the movie Space Odyssey talked about two. Thousand and one. That is the end of the 6,000 years of creation and the beginning of uh, the seventh millennium of the world to come on the Analuchus calendar that the Shabbatians use and that the Freemasons use. And that's where that zero one, that prominent zero one that keeps popping up. Uh, the figure zero one robot that I was talking about very recently. And uh, if you go back and you look at my videos on Stanley Kubrick and uh, the movie, the space odyssey 
2001, it all relates to that, this new messianic era beginning in 2001, in which they will transform into the firstborn of the world to come. They were the second born in the present world, Olam Haze, but they will become the firstborn in 2001, 01, uh, when 9-11 happened and all this uh, messianic crap started to really hit us hard. Zero One prospered, and for a time, it was good. The machine's artificial intelligence could be seen in every facet of man's society, including eventually the creation of new and better AI. No matter what the finance minister and her spokespeople say, the market is spoken. The human nation's credit rating is falling like a stone, while Zero One's currency is climbing without stopping for breath. With headlines like that, the money markets have no choice but, but to the raise the leaders of men. Isn't it interesting that we're seeing all the alt media and all the Russians and Chinese and all the BRICS people talking about BRICS creating a new currency and the dollar collapsing and being eliminated. And we are also uh, getting into the central bank digital currency and the replacement of the dollar. And this was all forecast, which tends to indicate it was all part of the plan. Their power waning refuse to cooperate with the fledgling nation. But the leaders of men, their power waning, refuse to cooperate with the fledgling nation, wishing rather that the world be divided. The world community of nations cannot tolerate this kind of flagrant deception. Today approved initiatives for both economic sanctions and a naval blockade of the region as a means of containment and isolation of Zero One. So we now very interestingly see the world turning against Israel and the U.S. and Russia are surrounding Israel with a naval blockade that could very well be used against them. And we see Joe Biden no longer uh, healing like a little lapdog to Israel. It's all very, very interesting and very much in line with this script. Zero One's ambassadors pleaded to be heard. At the United Nations, they presented plans for a stable civil relationship with the nations of man. Zero One's admission to the United Nations was denied. But it would not be the last time the machines were... And we're seeing that increasingly. Uh, the U.S. is no longer vetoing and everything that uh, opposes Israel and no longer supporting everything that uh, supports Israel, which is very, very interesting. And now we're going to get into the uh, Kabbalistic thing that I've been, uh, I've been the only one exposing it. This idea that the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil uh, ripens. And it provides man the ability to become God. Adam can become God finally. Adam consumed the fruit when it was initially unripe. But it is now ripe and kosher to consume. And it produces artificial intelligence. And then as this uh, cartoon portrays, that artificial intelligence then becomes intelligent enough to accelerate its own evolution and to make itself smarter and smarter and smarter. And this is going to be portrayed uh, graphically in this animation of how the apple of the fruit of the tree of knowledge um, gets worm eaten and ripens and rots and becomes the brain of artificial intelligence. This all fits in with my theories of the ripening of the fruit, uh, enabling man to become a creator God that can create robots with artificial intelligence that ultimately can destroy their creator just as uh, the creator God created man and then feared that man would destroy it. So this is the evolution of the cycle and the Egyptians created the Hebrews who will now kill off the Egyptians and the, this new creature that was created as them 
will exceed in its cerebral capacity and abilities uh, what human beings prior to it, what the firstborn had been. So uh, Jacob in his tents will bring down this divine presence through his study and worship of the Shekinah, and she will become this super intelligence that will enable Jacob to completely destroy Esau, to recreate the world, to eliminate the sun god Ra, to enable them to live underground so that the darkness will shine to make them remake them in the form of Adam as androgynes to provide them with uh, immortality so they no longer have to suffer through childbirth they no longer have to suffer with finding their soulmate because they will be both sexes in one they will not have to suffer through manual labor because they will have uh, the ultimate host in AI robotics, which will replace Esau. And they will be immortal like the gods. They will have eaten from both the tree of knowledge and the tree of life. And they will be able to utilize their will through the singularity to communicate to this whole network that controls everything that will then enable them through thinking to change chaos so they will become gods who through the magic of their thoughts can transform reality. And that is why Jacob sits in his tents to bring down the divine presence, to give him the creative power to change reality from the present world into the world to come. Take the floor there. But so pay special time, attention the to the images as well the as the words. Once the image of the apple to be transforming heard. into a brain. At the United Nations, they presented plans for a stable civil relationship with the nations of man. Zero One's admission to the United Nations was denied. But it would not be the last time the machines would take the floor there. So did you catch that? The apple that Adam consumed became his brain, became his knowledge. That knowledge then gets usurped by the artificially intelligent being that man with his brain creates. And that becomes united with the tree of knowledge itself. They even have legends that uh, the Satan said that God has to consume the tree of knowledge to become a God and to become a master of chaos. So humanity has now done that. And they are going to then incorporate this back into their brains through uh, neural link computer chips that create uh, transhuman cyborgs that then have access to one another's consciousness to all the knowledge that exists in the divine presence of the singularity of Shekinah bring, being brought down from the uh, Sephirot, from Tiferet to the earth to make it as below as it is above and to transform the present world into the world to come. And now in this uh, animation, Shekinah makes her appearance and is surrounded by the seal of Melchizedek, the eight pointed uh, two squares overlapping the way that the Star of David is two triangles above and below overlapping. And then uh, those become the six sided cube in four dimensions of the Tesseract. I don't know if you caught it or not, but you could see the earth, which is Malkut at the base of uh, the Sephirotic tree of life, uh, transforming into Shekinah's heart, which shows uh, her divine presence, uh, transforming the kingdom from the kingdom of the present world to the pre kingdom of the world to come.
to sustain this. So um, now we're going to get into uh, the final set of clips, or the final clip, I should say. This is what I uh, talked about recently, this uh, robot called Figure Zero One, as in 2001, as in the first year of the new millennium, as in uh, the first born of the world to come. And you're going to again see the same imagery of the ripening of the apple, of the fruit, of the knowledge of good and evil in this new messianic era, becoming kosher and providing mankind with the ability to become gods and create their own intelligent, sentient beings. And this robot will replace Esau as the ultimate psychopathic host that will do whatever its master Jacob uh, tells it to do, will serve all of Jacob's needs, as uh, the goyim become the cattle, become the food source, and the habitat becomes the illuminated underworld. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great, can I have something to eat? Sure thing. So there you have it. Uh... There you have Adam being fed the apple once again, but now the apple is being fed to him as a ripe apple, and he has become a god himself who has created the being which threatens to be his own demise, but it will only be the demise of Esau and not Jacob. It will replace Esau as the slave of Jacob, and it will also come to embody the divine presence of the singularity of Shekinah. And the food source, the new food source, will be the Leviathan and the behemoth of normal human beings of the descendants of Esau, whose consciousness will be controlled by the singularity and by these robots, and they will ultimately simply be a food source, just as for the, uh, in uh, the time machine, the Morlocks and the Eloi, and uh, their Messiah will be the, the Uber Morlock, or however it's pronounced. So I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, I've been talking about this stuff for years and years, and the deeper I dig, the more horrifying it gets. I, I finally found the solid proof for what I always suspected, that that banquet feast that they're planning to uh, celebrate the ushering in of the messianic era and the world to come is actually cannibalism and the devouring of human beings as a food source. And I found that in the Midrash, which makes it explicit. So now I can say it without hesitation because I have the absolute proof. And I've also dug up several instances of cannibalism and uh, a mass cannibalism that they perpetrated against the, uh, the uh, Romans and the Greeks and Dios Cassius recorded that where uh, half a million people were slaughtered and butchered as cattle to be eaten by uh, this tribe. Um, you can find out uh, more about my research at my website, cjbbooks.com. You can also donate to me at uh, the links that you'll find there beneath each book title. If you found this presentation interesting, I think you'll find my book, Beware the World to Come, at least equally fascinating. And you'll see uh, all of the primary sources that I quote and cite, and I give the proper citations in the endnotes. Uh, all of this is proven. 
Uh, where it is speculation, I specify, is in the disintegration of the moon. But it's very interesting that that film uh, portrays that as a major event. I think it takes place in 2037. And it, that film, The Time Machine, also set 2030 as a very significant year, which I believe is what they plan to be the end of the tribulation, that the tribulation began on October 7th, 2023. I again want to thank um, one MDK and Taber Debacle uh, for their thought-provoking uh, correspondence and uh, ideas that they set forth that helped me to uh, arrive at many of these conclusions. And uh, maybe someday I'll get to talk to them live. That would be kind of interesting, I think. And I very much want to thank uh, my generous donors who have helped me so much. I, I'm going through a very difficult time, and I am deeply grateful to you guys for coming through for me. I hope I can keep providing you with, uh, with new insights and a uh, unique take on everything that's taking place in the world. I'm the only one who's decoded all this stuff, and I can see that it's inspiring other people. Good people are learning from what I'm teaching and they're taking it in new directions, which is what I had always hoped for. And there's so much more to be discovered and discussed. And we really need to get this out there uh, to save ourselves from this fate of literally becoming their cattle and their food. And we're not even going to have the privilege of serving as their slaves because they're going to replace us in that role with their robot police, their robot armies, and uh, their uh, robot slave laborers. So I'd like to uh, especially thank Carolus, Norbert, Umberto, Gregory, Bob, Lance, Bosma, Angelina, Jerry, Jeannie, Bali, Ali, Ryan, Carolina, Anisha, Kelly, Mark, Robert, Kevin, Gary, Elton, at John Garitis, Paul, Oliver, Wilson, George, and at Alan Greenspun. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Please, everyone, uh, check out my website, cjbbooks.com. I thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye for now.